Hello, hello. So I, um, <laughs> yesterday after doing my live video, had so many awesome messages come to me um, just saying thank you for sharing my story. And you guys, I was actually a little bit surprised about that. Um, just because, I don't know, I was just, I, I felt a little bit like I was rambling. So um, as a result of yesterday's video, I had somebody give me a little bit of a challenge. And the challenge is to jump on here every day and do a live video about something. So um, as of right now, I have no idea what that's going to be. But today, I want to talk about just kind of piggybacking off of yesterday's video. Um, yesterday, I talked about just, you know, some struggles that I've had in my life and some of my journey bringing me to where... I am right now and um, so today I want to piggyback off of that and I want to just talk about 10 things that I did to change my life and if I can do it anybody can do it so I'm hoping that maybe some of the things that I did will uh, give somebody some inspiration or some ideas to um, just make positive change in their life so um, the very first thing that I did to change my life, you guys, was I stopped looking to other people to make me happy. And I cannot even tell you how much of a game changer this was to me. You know, I think that in life it's so easy sometimes to uh, blame others for our unhappiness or circumstances and at the end of the day it's really really up to us if we're not happy about something to make a change and and it's really as simple as that and so uh, if you're looking to your spouse to make you happy or if your spouse is making you unhappy or maybe you're struggling with your kids or your job or whatever it is um, the the biggest thing that I would say is uh, it's within your power to do something about it. Um, you can't necessarily change your family, but you can change how you react to your family. So, um, you know, just trying to look at your part in things, that is the biggest way that I changed my life and became a happier person, when I stopped blaming others for my unhappiness, you know, um, eliminated negativity and took responsibility for my part in things. You know, you can have a bad day and uh, react to things maybe in a way that you might not normally and that's on you. So that would be first thing. Um, the second thing I made a little list, so if I keep looking over there, that's why. But the second thing that I did was I started really focusing on things that feed my soul. So, you know, it's so easy, and I talked a little bit about this yesterday in my video, to kind of get off course. And it's even easier when you're so focused on something to lose sight of the things that make you happy. And so for me, I had spent so many years and so much time kind of taking care of everybody else. And yesterday I talked about in my video how I really, really wanted to be a good parent to my kids. And that was really important to me and just to be present. And so uh, in creating that balance, it's funny how you can kind of... Uh, get really good at one thing and then get off course in the others. So what ended up happening was I started to lose sight of myself and things that make me happy because I was so busy taking care of everybody else all the time. And so within the last couple of years, I have really, really made a point to um, just do some self-love and some soul searching and start doing things that feed my soul, that I enjoy. And so for me, that is traveling. 
Um, you guys see me posting a lot of pictures of places that I go and traveling, and I'm so thankful that my family has been so great about uh, just kind of letting me, um, you know, do the things that, that I want to do, and I appreciate that. Um, another thing t that I love to do is, is going to concerts. You guys see me posting a lot of concert stuff, and music make me, makes me happy. And so um, being with my horses makes me happy. Being out in nature, going on camping trips, all those things were things that I was kind of putting on the back burner because my kids were younger and because I was so focused on being a good parent. And again, you know, I had my marketing business still going on during this time. And so um, sometimes we just ca get caught up in, in life and we forget to do things that feed our soul. And so that would really be the second thing that I did or am doing, have done to change my life, you know, just really, really start to do, have some fun and let loose and, and not be so serious all the time and do things that I enjoy. And through doing those things, I have met so many amazing people and I've had so many amazing experiences. And, you know, I, I look at it like this, if I would die tomorrow, would I have any regrets? And if you asked me that question three years ago, the answer would have been yes, because I had all these things that I wanted to do. I wanted to travel and, you know, I just, I was spending so much time working and, um, you know, focused on my responsibilities that there wasn't a whole lot of uh, things that were feeding my soul happening other than like family and work. So uh, if you asked me that question today, I would say yes, that, you know, I, I don't have any regrets and that um, I'm just so thankful for all of the experiences that I've had and um, things that I've been able to do. And so that would lead me into number three is I started saying yes to opportunities when they present themselves. So I touched on this a little bit yesterday too in my video about just kind of surrendering to life and if an opportunity presents itself, even if it seems out of your comfort zone or unrealistic, um, what, what I did was I started saying yes and those yeses have led me to amazing people, amazing experiences and, and just things that I would have never imagined would come into my life, all because I stepped outside of my comfort zone and I said yes to an opportunity when it presented itself. And so uh, that would be number three, is just stop overthinking things so much and just say yes and take advantage of opportunities when they're presented to you. Um, number four would be I really started working on myself and reconnecting with my spiritual side. So for many years, um, some of you guys might know this, I I am extremely sensitive to um, energy and um, if you guys are familiar with the term empath, I think that would be a pretty good description of me and just kind of how I've been my entire life. But uh, when I was younger, I had a really strong spiritual side and over the years, again, I just kind of lost sight of that. And so when I was doing some soul searching and really trying to figure out what makes me happy and um, what I missed, if you know, about things, um, having that strong spiritual connection was something that was really important to me. And so I just started, decided to start taking some classes. I decided to, uh, I have a, a subscription to Gaia, which I don't know if you guys are familiar with that, but there's lots of great videos on there. I started reading books and just, um, really connecting with that, with that side of me again. And it has made me so much more aware and in tune to life and it has taught me so many lessons just keeping that connection open and and um opening up that side of me again so uh if you're you know kind of not sure what direction to go that would be a really good place to start as well 
Um, so, you know, I guess to kind of piggyback on that one, number five would be I started working on my mind. So along with my spirituality and just connecting in that way, I started doing a lot of uh, personal development. I started reading a lot of books and I started playing a lot of audiobooks. Um, there are so many inspirational people out there. And for me, some of the people that I find the most inspirational are people who come from nothing and then, you know, work their way into having success in different ways. And I really, really look up to that. You know, Steve Jobs started from uh, his garage and, and look at, you know, the company that he built. And so those types of people inspire me. And so what I did was I started uh, seeking out things that inspire me, different, um, you know, just different books that uh, I could relate to or that could teach me something. And so that definitely, when you start to learn different ways of thinking or things that other things that people have done and you open your mind to that, it definitely changes your life and it increases your happiness and um, it just gives you knowledge and tools to deal with things in different ways that maybe you didn't know about before. So um, the next thing that I did was I decided to cut out negativity in my life as much as I possibly could. And so, you know, one of the ways that I did that, a lot of my friends <laughs> kind of laugh at me because things will be happening and I'm kind of out of touch, um, really. So, you know, that's a good and a bad thing sometimes, but I figure if it's important enough, somebody's going to talk about it or I'm going to hear about it. And that's exactly what happened. So I stopped watching the news altogether. I was finding that when I was watching the news, it was making me feel really depressed. I was like, you know, there's just, there's so much hate going on in the world. There's so much negativity. And um, what I was finding is that it was making me feel uh, kind of this lack of hope for humanity. And that didn't feel good. And so I decided that I was going to stop uh I guess, subjecting myself to that negativity because here's the thing, as as much as there is negativity and bad things happening in the world, there is so much good and there are so many people that are doing good in the world. And a lot of that type of stuff does not ever make the news because here's, you know, here's the reality. Um, good news doesn't necessarily bring ratings. And so... Um, so what I did was I, I just kind of cut that out of my life. I stopped watching. I started paying attention to how things made me feel. So along with the news, you know, if I was watching a movie and it didn't make me feel good or if it didn't make me happy, um, I decided I wasn't going to engage in that because if you want to be happy and if you want to feel good, then you need to do and subject yourself to things that feed that rather than negative influences. So along with kind of cutting out media exposure and things like that, um, people, uh, negative people in my life. So on my Facebook, I am very, I have a lot of friends um, on there, but I am very selective and choosy on who I subject myself and my, my news feed. So the last thing that I want to do is go on Facebook and see, you know, negative images of an animal being hurt or abused or a child or, you know, fights breaking out or people arguing about politics. That's, that's something that doesn't make me feel good. And obviously for everybody, that's going to be different. And um, that's just something that it, it doesn't make me feel good. And watching people argue over politics and just the energy, the negative energy that goes into that, I would rather spend my time being positive and trying to uplift other people instead of engaging in negativity. Because at the end of the day, it really doesn't do any good.
um, it just makes you feel like crap. So, so negative people, um, limiting my exposure as much as possible to negative things on Facebook, media, news, movies, things like that. Um, and to kind of touch on the people aspect of it, you know, there are a lot of people. So, uh, you guys see me posting about CBD. I, there were a lot of people who were really against that. And, um, there's a certain component of education that I think is missing or people don't quite understand. And so when I first started getting into that industry, there were a lot of people who were uh, really negative about what I was doing. Um, and, and ironically, these same people are having really, really, it's not connected to the CBD, but just in general, uh, negativity feeds negativity. So Here's the thing that I've learned, you guys, is that when you are thinking constantly about negative thoughts or bad things that are happening in your life, in the world, somebody you know pisses you off, if you're so focused on that, guess what happens? It is, it is literally the law of attraction. You are going to bring more negativity into your life. And so if you don't want to have negativity in your life, you need to you need to get your thoughts under control and you need to be around people who are positive, people who inspire you. Um, you know, in in the industry that I'm in, there are so many amazing people who are just so inspirational and motivational. And so I chose to really surround myself with those types of people. And that makes me feel good. So that would be the next thing that I did was just uh, changing my tribe, changing my crowd, surrounding myself with positive people, inspirational people. Um, and, you know, I guess the, the next thing, I don't even know what number I'm on, but um, the next and final thing that I want to talk about is accepting people for who they are uh, everybody is entitled to their own opinion. And the part two of that is everybody is on their own journey. We all go through ups and downs. We all have our own lessons to learn. We all uh, are in different places in life. And just because you might have gone through something and you have insight or wisdom because of your experiences, uh, the next person maybe hasn't gone through something like that or they can't quite see things in the same way. And what was happening was um, I was getting frustrated a lot because, you know, do you, ever, do you ever have that friend or that person who is constantly going through something and they ask for your advice and then they don't take it? Um, and so you try to give them the answers and then you just don't understand why they're not like, it's like, here, here's the answer. This, you're, you're having a problem, you're asking me for help, but then you don't accept the help. Well, uh, I spent a lot of time feeling kind of frustrated in situations like that. And I realized that uh, it's not really my job to give the answers. So if somebody asks, I will gladly help, but um, what I have really, really been working on getting better at is just being a good listener and really accepting and loving people for who they are and where they are on their journey and knowing that we're all in different places. And when you can look at somebody in that way, um, it just changes the whole dynamic. And so... Uh, those are some of the things that I've done to change my life. So like I said yesterday, I talked about um, kind of rough periods in my life. And today I wanted to talk about how, what I did to take action to make my life better. And I think that's really the key to it is that, you know, you can go through something hard, but if you take action to move forward from whatever it is that you're going through, you're gonna get through it, and there's always gonna be light at the end of the tunnel, but it, it is up to you to do the things necessary to move forward. And so um, I hope that by sharing some of the things that I've done, maybe that 
gives you some some inspiration and um, what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm not necessarily going to jump on here every day and have deep thoughts, but I am going to jump on here and I uh, accepted the 30 day challenge. So I'm going to jump on here and just kind of uh, do some sort of a live video each day and say hi to everybody. So, um, so today is day one, technically day two, because I did one yesterday, but uh, day one and I will see you guys tomorrow. So I hope you guys are having an amazing day and um, take care. I'll see you tomorrow.